Hey, in this video we'll share our first impression of this beast, Taurus X8 Pro Cinelifter FPV drone and hopefully help you decide if this drone is suitable for your needs. A quick disclaimer, we did receive this drone for testing purposes from iFlight, but we are not getting paid to say anything specific. We are simply going to share our experience from flying with it and I'm here with my Hello, FE drone pilot, good friend, Alex Konchar. We work together on projects and while I'm more of a creative type of a person, he's the tech genius. So yeah, let's talk about the technical specs first. This is an 8-inch Cineliter drone designed to carry professional mirrorless or cinema cameras with maximum weight of 2 kilograms. To power it, you need an 8S battery. We use two 4S batteries from China Hobby Line, which are wired in series. The main reason going with this configuration is that if you use 8S, you easily exceed the watt hour rating limit for carrying on airplanes. And also, there are not many 8S batteries in the market. With this setup, we reached the maximum speed of 120 km per hour with the Komodo dummy mounted. The flight time was around 6 minutes, which of course depends on how aggressively you fly. To spin the motors, it uses 8 individual X-Class graded ESCs rated for 80 amps, which are mounted on the custom PCB. It also has a power module used to power the camera directly from the main battery, but to use it, you need to plug in the battery balance connector. It's a bind and fly drone, meaning all you need to do is to connect it to your controller and goggles and it's ready to fly. The pit and filter tune has already been done by iFlight and we must say it flies really well. All of the demo footage you see in this review has been captured with the original factory tune. Quick note regarding the footage itself, when possible, I try to avoid having drone shadow in the shots, but since the main purpose of this review is to show you how the drone flies, well, we decided not to be uh, picky. Otherwise, when doing a professional cinematic FPV geek, try to avoid having sun position directly behind the drone, because it's going to cast shadow in your frame. Not always possible to avoid it with FPV, because we are flying in all directions and often also circling around subjects, but something to keep in mind. Before we continue with the review, just give me 30 seconds to tell you about my favorite music licensing website, Artlist. As George Lucas famously said, soundies have the experience in seeing a film. So don't underestimate the power of good music and sound design. It's the key element that will help your viewer immerse into the visual experience of your work. This is why for the past two years I have been using Artlist for all my YouTube tutorials and commercial client work, license covers everything, all social media, broadcast, worldwide coverage and any new future platform. Searching features and music collections make finding music easy and they keep uploading new quality songs and sound effects. Link with the discount code is below this video in the video description. Back to Taurus, first we did a line of sight flight test to check if everything looks good, then we tried to uh, fly it normally with goggles and then the next step was to see how it behaves with extra weight, so we mounted a red Komodo dummy on it. For your information, the weight of the dummy is 1.5 kilograms. The whole setup is actually pretty heavy, so before mounting an expensive camera on it, I suggest you first to do a few test flights with a dummy. This is not your regular 5-inch freestyle quad, you will need some time and practice to get used to it and to gain confidence flying with such a heavy setup. You know, with a 5-inch you can flip and roll and change direction very quickly and efficiently, but this big chunk needs more time and space to completing the maneuvers, but it can do them all. So after a few successful test flights, we decided to mount Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K camera on it. We are very satisfied with the footage we managed to capture, because there were no vibrations in the videos and even without the stabilization, it already looks good. Of course, it also comes down to pilot skill, because to get smooth footage you have to be gentle on the sticks and avoid overcorrecting your shot. But if you want to stabilize footage in post-production, Taurus has an SD card installed directly in the flight controller, which means that you, can, you have plenty of free memory to log gyro data, so you could later stabilize footage with, uh, for example, gyro flow software. This is what we use. We think that the frame is a bit too heavy because it weighs around 2.6 kilograms, but at the end of the day, what matters is how it flies and yes, it performs very well. Now let's compare the X8 Pro with other two 6S Cinelifters that we fly. Those are Taurus X8 and Shenron Stick. The main difference is that X8 Pro is bigger and it's powered with the 8S battery. 
The motors are bigger in size and therefore it is easier for the drone to carry heavier payload. This allows you to also mount the camera gimbal on the drone such as DJI Ronin. The flight time on our testing was around a minute longer than as we get on other two 6S scene lifters. This of course depends on the batteries you use, maybe with the original 8S battery you get even longer flight time. Taurus Pro has a higher thrust to weight ratio but because it's a bigger drone it doesn't feel as agile, it feels more like a very stable and fast cruiser. The maximum speed is a bit higher, it reaches around 130 km per hour. It has a built-in cinema camera power module, so you don't need to worry about changing the camera batteries when you're on the set. So should you get this drone? Well, if you're not a technical type of a person and you don't want to spend time and effort building and tuning a cine lifter, then yes, this is a great option. Our first impression is positive, we are happy with the footage we managed to capture and we really like uh, how it flies. And of course time will tell about the longevity, we only had this drone what, uh, 4 weeks, uh, something like that. Uh, before we never had any issues with iFlight's electronics, so I don't see any reason why this wouldn't work. Uh, so yeah, let us know in the comment section below if you have any additional questions and we will see you there. Thank you for watching.